Um, I'm watching the uh, latest season of Yellowstone, and I'm watching Tulsa King, which we're both watching. Mm. Yeah, um, both Taylor Sheridan shows, right? Yes, both Taylor yeah. Sheridan shows. So I knew you'd be he watching Tulsa a, King. <laughs> he makes a he makes a fucking he makes so many fucking shows. Um, he's got I, another I, one coming I, out called 1923 with Harrison Ford. Um, mm. That's another Taylor. He just yeah no, he's just churning them out. Um, so this is 1923, but isn't there also an 1834 or something? Yeah, it's all about right. the Darton family, and it's all connected to the the Yellowstone universe. Right. But Tulsa and, King you know, is not connected. Is that right? No, no, no. Completely right. different. Um, how does, how does a, Tulsa King compare to the Yellowstone shows? Are they similar or different? Or no? Oh, so Tulsa King. Well, you've you've watched it. So Tulsa King is um, uh, Sylvester Stallone's playing a gangster who's just come out of prison after thirty years, and he's basically given an area, an, a country rural area, to look over and, and make money. Um, no, but how does it compare in terms of like the tone, the vibe? Is it completely different? Like feeling Tulsa like- King's Tulsa King's way more gangstery, kind of like Goodfellas it's vibe. Whereas vibe. yeah, whereas Yellowstone's more of a, a modern Western, or as close as you can get to a modern Western. Right, um, gotcha. D- drama. It's it used to be a bit more thriller, but it's now very drama almost a bit soap opery there's mm. a lot of family drama and such and i personally feel like yellowstones the past two seasons i just haven't been as engaged people are still really loving it but it's been mostly family drama now and it's kind of turned into more of a soap opera almost <laughs> um so but Tulsa King's really good. I'm I'm really enjoying Tulsa King. I don't know what your thoughts are on it. And I was quite surprised because it's Sylvester Stallone's it's like the first time he's ever played a gangster, which if you look at him, you, you think, would assume <laughs> that like at some point a, he's done it. Yeah. So I I, I, re- I listened to one interview he did once where he said he wasn't chosen. He tried to uh, apply to be an extra in The Godfather and he wasn't chosen because he didn't look Italian enough. Wow. <laughs> that is insane. Yeah. So, he's finally um, playing a mafia dude. About time. Yeah, I know. And he's got the look for it. And yeah. um, I, I think uh, the first episode I thought was a bit clunky and slow, but then after from episode two onwards, I think it's just been going strong since and um, it's really my kind of vibe. I don't know. What, what do you think? think of it matt um i like it i like tulsa king um i'm starting i'm in this zone now i'm probably how many episodes are out like five maybe? i think the sixth six or seventh one came out yesterday i haven't watched it yet yeah. so it's um, weekly it's not they don't just drop it like yeah. in one go okay no, no, it's plus weekly, doing yeah. it week by week and um it, the, when it released, only one episode dropped. Usually they, they try to hook you by dropping two or three. Yeah. But it was – I really liked the first episode actually. It really – I was surprised. Okay. I wasn't expecting to like it so much. So I was pretty annoyed I had to wait for a second episode. Because <laughs> um, after the first episode, you're still kind of like, where's this show going to go? Yeah. Um, and I usually feel like by episode two, by the end of episode two with most shows, you have an idea of what to expect. Um, and now I'm at the point where it's like – I like it because the scene the scenes never drag on. They 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 move pretty quickly. They they end everything with enough of a they get to a the dopamine point. hit to to make you want to go on to the next scene. Um, yeah. My the the thing I've noticed though I've noticed this um, pattern with the writing of Tulsa King, and I don't know it's, if it's going to ruin the show with me or not. But whenever you watch Tulsa King. Just imagine you have like your old um, uncle, drunk uncle next to you. And just after every scene, just imagine him going, fuck yeah, fuck yeah. Because every scene, go, every single scene in Tulsa King goes like this. Ugh, I'm so strong. I'm an old man. Ugh. Look at this millennial. Look at this Gen Z person. Oh, yeah, he doing? doesn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, <laughs> and, and, he, and then they'll be like, oh, well, I've got this little app on my phone or, oh, you need yeah. to use my pronouns or whatever. And he'll be like, ugh, 
punch you in the face or, or, or uh, well, that's, a, that's, that's, that's a bit you and then he'll and yeah. then he'll just walk off like a badass and it's always like being old and tough is so cool like back in but my see, day I, I love that contrast i love the contrast of you know he comes from a very traditional macho kind of you know and he's just because he's older he just doesn't understand uh, younger people and how everything's you know more computerized and I don't, I just love that well, ex- aspect of with it. That, so. But my problem with that is, yeah, he doesn't understand. But there's no like he doesn't learn anything ever. He's always right. He it's doesn't like, learn it's, anything. It's, ever. it's more like these young people don't understand. Like I think it would make more sense if the the guy who's dri- his chauffeur who's driving around is the younger dude. They they learn give and take of each other. I think so. Like Stallone could be like, "This is how you rough someone up," or "This is how you collect some money." But then the other guy should be like, "Well, this is how you use your phone," you know. <laughs> Instead of the guy yeah. just going, "Here's ten grand, go buy yourself another car or whatever." Like I feel yeah. like I want to. Uh, by the end of the season, I want to see him grow and learn off the people around him. Yeah. I mean, it's still very early. I mean, he's you know he's a character that's come out of prison after you know he's been in prison for thirty years. Yeah, but I feel like nothing uh, just, ever goes wrong for him. You know, he's always yeah. he's always winning. There's no consequences for his. I, I can't, Adrian. Swear to God, this is how the first yeah. episode goes. Okay. He's on his way. He gets in a car, like a taxi. He's driving to like his motel where he's going to live. On the way, he sees a medicinal marijuana shop. He goes, stop the car. What's that store? I goes, oh, they sell weed. It's legal. He goes, okay. He walks in, beats up the security guard, tells everybody from now on, like, no, you owe me a car. He, 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 he doesn't do that straight away. He uh, but do, he basically, got- he, 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 he checks him out. He, he tells him, I own this store now. Like within two scenes, maybe he owns the <laughs> store. They own him. Nobody ever calls the cops. Nobody ever, like, tries to fight back. They're just like, okay, we're losers. We're all cocks. <laughs> And he's like, and he walks out back into the car, goes home, nothing. And like everything, yeah. every time he asks for something, he always gets it. There's no conflict. Well, there's, I don't know how wow. far you are, but there's a scene. Uh, it's one I of the more recent. Saw, he he rallied his like little troops and uh, fought that little bikey gang. But even yeah. with that, even with that, it was like, oh, this guy's father's standing up to him. Finally, a consequence. And then it's like, okay, so he's going to throw down. And then the guy's father's like, okay, well, if you guys are going to fight, then I'm going to join is- too. And it's like, what? You, you fucking teamed up with the guy who's like ruining your son's life? <laughs> like, that should have been. That's not being a Avengers Assemble moment. That is your like fucking Batman v Superman moment, you know? Well, that's the, if you can't beat him, join him, Matt. He knows his son's not going to listen to him, so. Um, oh, man. Just- no, there's a there's a subtle scene uh, you probably haven't seen it yet where it's implied that some of the local police are pretty corrupt. Um, but that you're so saying I, I the biggest that's- consequence so far has been an implication. <laughs> what do you and mean? Seven episodes <laughs> in. What do you mean? You said you said like the the like there's an implication that they're corrupt and that's like the bad shit that's going on. So nothing's even yeah, happened watch, to him. Watch, watch, watch up to date and then, and then come okay. back to me. All right, all right. But, yeah, look, I, I'm going to keep watching, but I don't know if I'll stick around for season two. We'll see. It's just right I'm enjoying now, it so far. So I'm, I, I'm – I enjoy the witty banter of him machoing everybody up, but there's only so much testosterone I can, I can take <laughs> without it being – like, like, like fast it's too, it's is too much like, for you, for you, is it? Like it's 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 macho porn basically. It's like it's just like look how manly I am and shit constantly, and that's fine. Fast and Furious do it, but every now and then they, they wink at the camera or something. This is like if you, you know, how like we always laugh at Fast and Furious, say they're yes. super macho, but they're yeah, in on but the different, joke, different, even they're not. Different kind this of is macho. Not, but this is not Dude. in on the joke. Like this is like it's constantly patting themselves on the back. Like yeah, I get exactly what you're saying. I don't even. I don't think I can do that. Then I, don't I feel know, like I you're just in go. disagreement to me, though. <laughs> no, I am. Like I, a lot of Taylor Sheridan shows and and films are very macho-y. Like even the female characters, I've, I've got a lot of um, a lot of the female main female characters got a lot of. 
I don't know we call it macho y energy or the more assertive. Like mas- masculine energy. Or- yeah, they're okay. more assertive and dominant. And it's just it's just that kind of gritty writing. But um, I wouldn't call this show gritty. I would call this show it's almost superhero y. Because nah, yeah, I wouldn't say it's superhero y. Like, no, but the writing is. It's like there's he's he's inhuman. Like there's no there's no he can't get hurt. He can't like he's never scared of anything. He's never once like sometimes oh, he was not a regret. But a lot like, of that comes from his daughter. I mean, he was almost he's almost shot. He's almost killed. Uh, yeah, and then, like the next, and then like the next scene, he fucks the guy up. Like I feel like the masculine. Like I, what I do like about the show is it is a male power fantasy. I think specifically for older dudes, older than me, and that's totally cool. I'm actually down for that, and I love how. Like those little power fantasies of a guy threatening someone. Sometimes, like I'm a sucker for that type of writing. I really like it. But the show has to be more than just that. Like you need to break it up with mm. some realistic um, interactions every now and then. You need some palate cleanses. Like yeah, because just constantly, if he's always threatening people and <laughs> like be, he's basically Superman. It's like I feel like every now and then I need a scene where it's like. I don't know. Either either give someone a, a a time to shine to give us a break from that, so it doesn't feel like it's just one person, or mm. yeah, I, I I don't know. Just I, maybe there'll be a big twist coming up that'll make me change my perception. Jesse's smiling, so maybe there is because I might be an episode <laughs> behind him. Um, I don't know. I'm just I'm enjoying it. I'm I'm you know I'm waiting to see where it will go. I kind of get where you're coming from. I don't fully agree, but I'm, you know, I'm enjoying yeah. it so far. Um, that's, I, I, it's, I do like it's, it though. Like I haven't mm. quit yet. So that they're doing something right. That's for sure. This is mm. the type of show I expect Dwayne Johnson of Vin Diesel to make in 20, oh. 30 years. I, I no, hope man. to fuck they don't put a Dwayne Johnson <laughs> or Vin Diesel anywhere near this kind of material. They just got to stick to their flashy, actiony. But Sylvester shit. Stallone used to be flashy, actiony shit. You know what I mean? I feel yeah. like. Yeah, but Sylvester Stallone has. Uh, it's but hard yeah, to explain. Yeah, like, like, Sylvester, it's, Stallone Sylvester Stallone has was a, a kind of. He's, he, the, there's a there's a appeal like for me there's an appeal to Sylvester Stallone that's lacking in Dwayne Johnson and Vin Diesel. And I don't know what it is, but there's just something more I find more. I actually agree with you there. Like there's, definitely, there's, something, there's a bit more depth to to depth, yeah, a bit more depth to Stallone. Maybe because he's done. Rambo and Rocky. More Rocky and yeah. yeah, I feel there's a bit more depth to him. No, I, I agree. Um, he has he's got way more substance to he. I th- his career I and everything. think he feels and comes across more as more of an underdog than a straight like packaged hero. Yeah. That if, if that's if that makes sense. He like, doesn't come across to me as a type of guy that would put in his contract, I need this many punches on this dude. Like, <laughs> I mean, he could yeah. do, but he doesn't come across to me as that, as that dude. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I agree. I, he's, I he's not a clean, clean cut, um, you know, hero. The thing is about Stallone is he comes from a writing background where mm. he knows, like he, he wrote Rocky, the biggest, the best mm. underdog story of all time. He doesn't oh, even I, win in that I, movie. So like, he understands that, which I guess is why it's surprising. I'm not seeing much of that here. But again, I haven't seen the full season. Um, Dwayne Johnson would never touch a thing. Like, in fact, there's some. Let's stay on topic mm-hmm. though. Um, so Jesse, Tulsa King, we liked it. Yes, I'm really enjoying it, and I'm and I'm also very keen for Mirror of Kingsdown because season two of that show comes back January 15. So I'm mm. going to be keeping Paramount Plus in the meantime. <laughs> yeah. and they've I've, got you hooked they got me hooked that's good <laughs>